What's up guys, Johnny here, welcome back. Today, I got something a little bit different. If you guys are subscribers to this channel, you're probably used to seeing me drone racing, talking about drone racing, building drone racing quads, um, and vlogging about drone racing. Five gate the Dawn just ahead of Johnny Fly into the Fat Shark Corkscrew. Boomerang is definitely gonna get it, but who is second? It looks like we're at over the, wow! Dude. Oh, that was <laughs> you know you got the moment of the day with that. I heard that, man. The get FPV, get a ton moment of the day. Oh. But today we got something a little bit different. Today we got a DIY portable solar generator. Let's check it out. All right, so first off, what does it mean to be a portable solar generator? So basically this thing is just a big battery uh, that I made on my own. And I have ability to plug in different USB devices, uh, plug in standard US outlet plugs into it, uh, power whatever I want, and then make it portable so I can take it with me. Now it's very similar to a lot of products you'd see out there like um, the EcoFlow, maybe a Ego Nexus or um, a Goal Yeti Zero or the new AC200 by Blue Eddy. Uh, those sorts of devices. So they exist, they're not unique, but what ends up happening is they get really, really expensive. Now, what I wanted personally was kind of when this whole pandemic started, uh, coronavirus, all that kind of stuff, I started thinking about different ways to have power. And I do have a portable generator that I use, but that requires gas. And I started to realize the way to have reliable power whenever you need it is to go with solar. So I really wanted some way to have some sort of uh, solar power so I could power sort of essential devices inside my home if we ever got to the point that I needed to do that. So that's kind of was the journey that started this whole thing. Now, what you're probably wondering is if I thought it was too expensive to buy one of those things, you know, what does something like this cost? Now, as I have it here, um, all the different components, it costs somewhere around 550 to, you know, maybe 500 to $550. So not an inexpensive project, but still not nearly as much as some of those $1,000, $1,500, $1,700 products you'll see out there. Now it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of those products, but I don't need those. I built this based on what I need. And honestly, I had a ton of fun doing DIY. All right, now as we take a look at the different features of this thing, obviously we talked about the, the standard AC outlets here, had different ports on the front. So all these have little flip up covers um, inside of here, we have different USB ports. I have a power delivery port. I have three different uh, quick charge 3.0 ports, and then I have a couple standard 5 volt, 2.1 volt ports. Um, if you notice here on the AC outlets, I actually have four total um, 2.1 amp 5 volt ports. And then up here, I have a standard 12 volt output there. Now, this particular battery is actually a 7S battery. Uh, meaning that the nominal voltage is about 25 volts. So that's basically the equivalent of doing a 24 volt system, but I've actually have a voltage regulator in there. So this is standard 12 volt outlet. So if you had a device that needed actual 12 volts, you could plug it in here and use 12 volt output. On the backside, I, I actually have a, an input right here. This is an XT60 port. So I do a lot of drone racing. We use a lot of XT60 connectors. So I had plenty of these things. I put that thing on here and that's actually how I connect my solar. So I take my solar panels, I plug them in there. I have solar input to charge this bad boy up. So this particular case is a Craftsman line case. It's part of their VersaStack system. I think this is a 17 inch system. And the reason why I chose this is kind of a few different folds. Now, batteries actually get pretty heavy. Inside of this particular thing, it weighs right now about 45 pounds and I have a single uh, 1.35 kilowatt hour battery in there, but I plan to add at least another one. So in total, that's gonna get me to about 60 pounds and that's a lot to be lugging around. One nice thing about this particular case is it does have a handle on the top I can lift from. It does have two handles on the side I can lift and hold it from. And it also has a handle and, uh, and wheels in the back so I can move it around. So that's really why I wanted this particular component is I wanted something with wheels I can get around because it is kind of heavy and it's really nice. I can just slide this up here and have some a really easy handle to, to get it around to wherever I need to go. Another nice part about the, the Craftsman series, the Versa Stack, is it's made to be stacked. So what I can do is, if I want to extend the system, I can get another item from the Versa Stack line and actually put it on top. So in this case, you know, it's meant to hold little compartments, put in little tools inside here. But what I can actually do is, let's say I wanted to extend my battery life. I could build another battery, put it in here, set it on top, attach it, and now this is one solid device. Now the nice thing about it too is I, I've added more weight to my stack. I can still wheel it around with my handle here, but I'm not gonna get myself in a situation where it's too heavy to lift, because if I need to lift up pieces, I can always detach that very easily 
and go back to my lighter setup and now I can lift the two separate. So that was a really nice option for me. I like the ability to over time extend this into a bigger system. Um, and this is really cool. I could do lots of different types of compartments too here. So if I wanted a really fast AC charging uh, module, I could build it in here, stack it on, plug it in, charge AC. It's just, there's a lot of different flexibility. If I need more outlets, more ports, I can always put them in here. Or really the simple one, just add more battery. All right, so that's why I picked out this stack. So far it's working out really well. The portability, I've been moving this thing inside, outside in the house, wheel it around in this house, borrowing different devices. It's been working out absolutely fantastic. But the meat and potatoes of this particular device is on the inside. So let's pop this guy open and check it out. All right, so as we open this up, you can see right here is the heart of the system when it comes to these AC outlets, and that's the reliable electric pure sine wave inverter. Here we're using a 24 volt system. I mentioned it's a 7S battery using 18650 battery, standard NMC lithium ion batteries. That's compatible with a 24 volt um, inverter. So that allows me to run this in 24 volts. Now, when I was deciding to how to build this, there's a lot of thought between doing a 24 volt and a 48 volt system. I'll get back to my choice and why I won't decide to do 24 volts, but so far it's working out pretty well for me. Uh, the next thing you'll show is up here. You can see where I've actually installed my solar charge controller. So the solar charge controller here is actually a Victron MPPT 115 uh, charge controller. What I really like about this item is I don't need to see a, a screen. Most charge controllers have screens to show, but this is gonna be on the inside of my case. I don't need to see it, I don't need a screen. This actually works with Bluetooth. So from my phone, I have an app that I'll bring open and I can see the status of it. I can set the configuration on the different battery settings. I can go through and see when it's full. I can see all the data about how long it took to be full. Uh, what the different charge rates were that it used. Um, and that's really, really cool stuff. Really, another big thing is the way it's cooled is actually passively cooled. So there is no need to have additional fans going. So a lot of times when it's out here charging, you almost don't even hear it. I do have some fans on the sides to get additional airflow if I need it. But a lot of the time charging, the fans aren't on. It's just sitting quiet. The only heat you really get is from the sun coming in. So this thing's been really, really great. It is a bit of an expensive uh, MPPD solar charge controller, but for the size you get, you really can't beat it. The performance is absolutely fantastic. I originally tried to build this with a different device that I saw from some different videos. The MPPT, um, MPT 7210, I think it was, 7210A. And that device only cost $15. This is about 10 times as expensive. Um, but I really ran into a lot of issues trying to use it. It wasn't reliable and I did not enjoy it at all. Going along the top side of my case, you can see here, I have a little thing hanging at the top. That's actually a thermometer, so it can monitor the temperature inside this case. So if it gets too hot, I have a fan controller down here in the corner. The fan controller relay will turn on, turn on the fans, and try to cool it down if it's getting too hot inside. Really cool thing about that is you can actually configure what temperature you want it to turn on at. Right now, I have it configured at 30 degrees Celsius, turn on the fans, and cool it down in here. This device up here is actually a 12 volt uh, regulator. I mentioned that the outputs on the front were standard uh, regulated 12 volt output. That's how I get it from here. Right now that's actually configured to power all my USB ports as well as my fans and my 12 volt output. This is a, a 10 amp uh, regulator so I can run up to 120 watts on my 12 volt system which from all the cases that I have that's more than enough so the nice thing too is it fits in nice and neat up there and I really like it a lot. So let's dig back down and see the more of the guts of the system. Let's take a look. All right so looking down lower in the case um, I'm not going to pull this all out to get to, but you can see here, this blue part here, that's actually the battery I put together. So this particular battery is made from BAK recycled batteries that I bought through Battery Hookup. Um, it ended up being a really cheap way to get a lot of storage. So 1.35 kilowatt hour batteries. And at the end of the day, I think I spent something like $140 for that. Um, to try to put that into perspective, what can I use 1.35 kilowatt hours of storage for? You could charge your phone. Um, I'd have to do the math, but something like 110 different times. I have my MacBook Pro laptop. I can charge that thing 15 to 18 times. Um, it's a lot of storage in that package for a relatively low amount of money, especially when you start comparing it to a lot of other cases where you know you buy batteries. It always seems to be the expensive thing. So it was a lot of fun putting that together. I actually have a Dolly BMS inside of this pack here. It's all wrapped in shrink wrap to protect it. Um, but this went together really easily for me. The Dolly BMS so far is working out okay. And I actually have it connected here with an XT60 connector. And that goes into here. This is actually a circuit breaker. So this particular circuit breaker is a 50 amp circuit breaker. Now it may seem a little strange that I'm running 24 volts, 50 amps and 1500 watts. As it is, I can't actually put out all of 1500 watts with that circuit breaker. 
So if I do want to make full use of 1500 watts, I will need to upgrade this circuit breaker to something a little bit bigger. And that's where using something like a 48 volt system would have been very handy. I could have actually used 50 amps and gotten twice the, num twice the watts uh, to really power expensive things. But really, I'm looking for things that can run over a longer period of time and put this to good use, not something for you know, running very high powered coffee maker, water heaters, uh, power tools, and those sorts of things. Um, plus, I could have gone with probably a 1000 watt power supply, but the price difference was not much. 1500 watts fits in here very well, so I decided I might as well have a little bit of an upgrade path, so go with the 1500 watts. Now going over here from the, uh, the switch I have, I really like that I can turn the system on and off with my circuit breaker. If I go over those currents, something happens inside here, there's something that's not safe, it's causing too much current. This thing will trip, I did test it out. That will turn the whole system off. It disconnects the, po the positive power of my battery. From there, I go into here, I have a battery monitor system, which is using a shunt over here. The shunt is measuring different current as it goes through. So I can actually monitor the wattage uh, that's going in and out of this battery at the time. Now this system is not perfect. It is a D-Rock system that I purchased off of Amazon, um, but it does give me a good idea. One issue I do have with it is as it's being charged through solar, the watts actually show up as positive. So I can't tell watts in or watts out. It just shows up as watts. Um, and because of that, when you look at it, it has different inputs like the amp hour capacity. It has no idea. It just makes it up. Um, so I don't get to use all the data, which is kind of disappointing, but at least it's something. Now, if you follow the different wires over here, you can see this XT XT60 that I have screwed in uh, to the back of the case. That is my solar charge input. So from here, when I plug in XT60, actually follow the wires in here. It goes into that solar charge controller. So these wires are... Um, these are actually 12 gauge wires here, which would be more than enough. Usually I'm only using about... Uh, five amps through there, so that's more than enough. From there to charge the battery, I'm actually using 14 gauge. Again, it's usually powering at about five amps, so that's more than enough as well. Following through here from the battery, everything is 10 gauge. So 10 gauge up to the, the circuit breaker, 10 gauge over to the shunt, 10 gauge over to uh, the sine wave inverter. So 10 gauge is, again, probably not quite enough for doing 1500 watts. But if I do need to run 1500 watts on this thing, I'll end up either having to replace this, maybe double up the wires um, for my 10 gauge to have two different 10 gauge wires to increase the output a little bit or something like that. But as is, 10 gauge is probably more than enough for how much I'm using this thing. So following it over a little bit further, if you can see over here, this is actually my 12 volt rail. So I have it tied in up here to my 12 volt regulator. It then comes in and plugs into all my different utilities. So these are just using spade connectors that I uh, crimped on. And I have one line that basically goes and jumps between the four different outlets, and that's what powers these. Now, one thing you will know is the 12 volt is not actually powering any of the USBs on the side. So those are actually really cool and that they are meant to be put into a desk. So what ends up happening is inside this, or connected to this inverter, I have two different AC plugs that I have soldered. So I actually shorten these things up quite a bit, solder my own connectors on, and then I run that from the front, run it over, plug it into the inverter. So the inverter is actually powering for the USB port. So if I'm looking to charge things USB, I don't use those first, I use those last um, because there's a little bit of inefficiency in having to go from DC to AC and back to DC versus using a DC to DC 12 volt converter for the front ports. Now, the other thing too is there is no way to turn on and off the inverter on the outside. So either the inverter is always on or it's always off. In my particular case, I'm okay with that because it's so easy to open and close this case to get in here. I actually rely on this switch here to turn on and off the inverter. So a lot of the times, if I just want to charge DC, if I just want to plug in USB devices, I just go ahead and leave that inverter off, flip on the device, plug in my USB, and I have very, very little draw. Now, if I have to power something like I'm powering my desktop computer or something like that, something that requires AC, I'll flip this on, and then when I power up the whole system, now I have AC output. And you can see here, I just turned on the whole system, it is dead silent. The fans are not on. The current temperature is not yet to turn on the fans. Um, as it heats up a little bit, they're turned on and cool it down. But this system is live right now. So very, very quiet system, quiet way to provide power. And uh, I think that's really, really cool. All right, so I mentioned this thing is a portable solar generator, which means I need some sort of solar to power this thing or else it's not really a solar generator. Um, so a lot of people sell these foldable solar panel systems. Typically they're 100 watts. It's 250 watt panels folded together. And those look really cool to me. They come in a nice little bag, but they are expensive. The cheapest one I could find, I think was about $240 and they go up to $300 for hundred watts. So I decided to DIY it myself and build my own folding system. This I actually built out of two 100 watt panels. So this is a 200 watt folding system. 
And each of these panels was $79 off of Amazon with free shipping. So 200 watts combined, almost $160. These two hinges I bought here that I put on there, they cost about $2 each. So about $160 for double the output of something that costs less than, than what you could buy on the market. Now it's a little bit more of a hassle to deal with it when it's a DIY system, but it's fun to make, you get more power. So it's a win-win for me as far as I'm concerned. Now this existing system right here, I have it setting on some PVC. So I just took some PVC some from some of my drone racing gates, cut it up and then assigned it in such a configuration that could stay uh, make it stand here and then point it at the sun when it's up in the sky. So this allows me to get a little bit more efficiency pointing at the sky. And again, that DIY nature using PVC, it's a really cheap building material to build something that can hold this up. Now, the way I have these two panels set up is they are connected in series. So each of these is a 12 volt panel. They run um, at an operating voltage somewhere around 16 volts typically. Um, an open voltage, I believe is somewhere around 22 volts. So that means when they're in series, you actually double that. So I have about 32 volts while it's charging and I have about 40 volts when it's an open circuit. Now, the nice thing about this is because I have two of them that I can put together and run at a higher voltage, I can actually use that MPPT charge controller. Typically to use an MPPT charge controller, such as the Victron, you actually have to run at a higher voltage of your solar than you're using on your battery. So at fully charged, my 7S battery is 29.4 volts. So that means I need these things to put out at least 30.4 volts in order to be charging. Anyway, I ended up crimping on my own XC4 connectors. I then connected that in series. And then here I have a 14 gauge wire that I run that's about 30 feet long. I'll plug that into my solar generator to get my solar input. All right, so I mentioned that I had a battery monitoring system inside there. So you can see the de device output right here. So right now I actually have it plugged in charging on solar and a couple devices charging off it. So you can see on it, it's showing a five watt total number, um, which is actually kind of confusing. So right now I have about a hundred watts going into the system and I probably have about 20 to 30 watts coming out of the system. So I don't know exactly how it gets to that particular number, but I'm sure if I unplug the solar, maybe that number would make a lot more sense. So for the most part, I ignore most of these things. So you can see so far, I've been using this thing for 51 hours. Okay, I don't know what to do with that, but 51 hours is pretty cool. You can see the current battery is at 28.8 volts. When I charge this thing up, I actually charge it up to 29.2 volts. So it's pretty much full right now in the sun towards the end of the day. Uh, when I charged it this morning, it took about four hours to charge from about half full to full. And now after I use it a bit in the day, I have it back outside charging again. So you can see it also shows internal and external resistance. I don't get much value out of that. It shows a capacity of 180 watt or amp hours, which is really pretty much nonsense. There's about 50 amp hours inside this thing. And if you look down at the bottom left, you see that there's a 4.89 kilowatt hours um, amount of energy. But again, it's because it's gone energy in, out, in, out. Um, and so far I put in and out about five kilowatt hours through this system. So that battery monitor that you see in the middle, that's actually computed just from the voltage you see on the top left. So there's not really telling you much, but it looks kind of cool to have it out there. Um, I do like monitoring the wattage and the amps to see what it's pulling out of the battery, but that's more for fun than anything else really. So the most important thing to look at is really just the voltage. So out here, you can see that the circuit breaker, it's currently flipped on. The device is turned on. I really like how the circuit breaker has a switch to flip it on and off. That's really why I went with this device. I picked this up from watching the video from Lithium Solar. Um, he too actually went with a Craftsman series. I uh, definitely recommend checking out that video. He put in a lot of information on how to build one of these systems. That was very helpful to me here. Um, I had already decided to build my own, but when I found that along the way, it really helped guide me towards the end in specific components to choose. Um, and I really do appreciate what he put together. So definitely I'll leave a link there and go check that out. Uh, one thing I wasn't too happy with is I actually put the fans on the outside of this case. In the end, it doesn't get in the way. I still can get into my handle here. Um, but having it on the outside does expose it a little bit more. I do have these mesh grills on the outside to protect uh, it from debris going in and out of the device. Um, so in the end, it works out okay. The reason why I actually have it on the outside is the way that I built my battery packs. I actually built them before I knew exactly what container I was going to use. And the full width of my battery uses up the full width of this container. So the fan on the inside would actually get in the way. So I mounted it on the outside and so far it's working out pretty well. Now you may have noticed right now this is a solar generator and there's no way to power it outside of solar. Um, I'm okay with that. I am tempted to put in either a AC power supply or maybe a DC to DC converter to make it a little bit better. But for now, if I actually had to charge it with something other than solar, I can use this right here. So this is an Xbox 360 power supply. Plug this in the wall and I have AC output. On the other end, I've actually put an XT60 on there. So this XT60, um, it can't be plugged into the solar charge contract, uh, 
port because this is only putting out 12 volts. And as I mentioned, that MPD charge controller, while it takes in DC power, it has to have uh, power levels higher than the battery. So I have to be putting in something at least about 31 volts if I want to charge using that charge controller. So what I actually can do is I have a DC to DC converter. So I'll plug this in, plug it into my DC to DC converter, set that up to 32 volts and then plug it in. And I can actually charge this thing up to about 300 watts that way. So that works in a pinch, but really I plan on using this thing as solar most of the time. So I'm not too worried about it. If it starts to become a problem, well then I'll just switch it over and put in a DC to DC converter inside that solar case. All right, so that pretty much wraps up my DIY solar generator. Right now it's about 1.35 kilowatts, but I did mention I am adding another battery. Uh, when I'm done with that, I expect this thing to come out to about three and a half kilowatt hours, uh, which should give me all the power I need for pretty much anything I want. Plus, as I said, if it turns out not to be the case, I do have a pretty easy way to build on top of it, add additional capacity, and doing so at a reasonable price. Um, I did mention the competition that's out there that's really, really great devices, has a little bit fancier features, um, but I don't need any of those features and they can't add capacity like I can. So that's a really nice feature that I have and I did it at a much lower price. So I'm really happy with that. Now, if you, you follow along with me, I'm going to get back to my drone racing uh, content really soon. Uh, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my solar generator out to the drone racing field and use that as my field power supply. So typically when we go out to the field, we bring our generators out there. They make a lot of noise. They stink up your car. They smell like gas. It'd be really, really nice to have a silent way to generate all the power we need for drone racing. I'm also actually a chapter organizer, so I organize the, the local drone races around here. And I have a lot of equipment that I power. Computers, timing systems, speakers, um, charging my own batteries. Uh, that I use for flying and I want to see if I can take this thing out to the field use it to power everything that we use to run a drone race and uh, yeah not have to do with that gas anymore so I'm gonna be doing that in a future video I'm gonna bring it out to the field give it a test see how it works throughout a day of drone racing and answer the question can drone racing huh, be powered by solar power I'm actually gonna leave links down below to all the different components that I use to purchase this, including where I bought my batteries, the solar panels, the charge case, the charge controller, everything else. Um, please leave me any questions down below if you have about how I built this, why I chose the components that I did. Uh, the one thing I did wanna talk about briefly is my choice of 7S batteries. Now, as a drone racer, I have a lot of, of hobby chargers and a lot of my hobby chargers can actually charge up to 8S batteries. So I knew that by going with 7S, I could actually plug those directly into my devices. I can use a balance checker. I can use a, um, a balancing device to actually balance the battery for me if the BMS isn't working properly. I could charge it up to full on my hobby charger. And those are really nice advantages. Plus I knew that over time, if I have an issue with one of my battery packs, I can actually pull out one battery pack. And if they're both 7S batteries, um, continue to power the device and use the device on just one battery pack. So that was a nice bonus too. So really the only downside that I have the way I see it is the ability to use smaller gauge wire to power higher, to power higher output wattage devices. So if I was planning on doing a lot of things like powering uh, water heaters, uh, you know, to, to heat up your coffee, uh, to heat up your tea or to run power tools, I would probably want to go with the 48 volt system, build a 14 S battery instead. And then I could really power through with fewer amps, put less strain on the wiring system, use the same sort of um, DC circuit breaker that I use, but yet power it much higher. So if that's your use case, 48 volts probably makes more sense. But for someone like me that wants to be able to run it over a longer period of time, maybe powering my work computer, my monitors, uh, maybe powering my fridge. Uh, we have a medical fridge that we have in the house that's really important to keep powered at all times. I know that with that current configuration as is, I can charge that for a day and a half, no problem. Um, and then the solar power, if I had that going all day, would be enough to keep that thing going indefinitely. So that's a really nice benefit to me that that really makes me sleep a little bit better at night. And for that main use case, 24 volts just works out absolutely perfect. Um, so that's everything I have. Hopefully you found this video helpful, you enjoyed it. Leave that thumbs up if you liked it. Um, and yeah, look forward for more drone racing content in the near future with some of this stuff mixed in because it is definitely one of my new hobbies is uh, batteries, battery technology, and solar power. Love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Questions, let me know. And as always, I'll check you all next time. Peace.